Hello. Not sure if anyone's there. Let me see. It looks like I might be the only one here. That's good. Let's see. Oh, high quality. Okay. Easy camera, high quality. Okay, I'm going to pause this to see if it recorded and then we'll get going with some discussion about moles. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it looks like nobody's here yet, but I'm going to uh, start anyway. It took a few minutes to get everything ready. Um, I'm ready with my, my t shirt, so um, I'm going to begin. So I have a whiteboard here. I'll try and get this white light to behave itself a little bit. Um, and I'm going to write down some, just have a discussion with you about moles. Okay, it's kind of annoying, but there you go. Okay, so the mole, yeah, so people can see. There you go. Well, again, this is my first time doing this, so let's see how, how we go. The word mole is short for molecule. Mole is an abstract idea, and it means um, a specific number of molecules. So mole really is a number of molecules. It's a very special number, and it's a number that you should memorize. Um, for use in exams. It's the number is Avogadro's number. So this is named after Amadeo Avogadro, who was a, an Italian scientist, very ugly man, if that makes any difference. Um, Hideous, make you scared if you look at him. And the number that you have to memorize is 6.022 by 10 to the 23rd power. Notice it's got no unit it, because it's just a number. Um, you wouldn't say that this number had any significant figures. So whenever you use the mole or Avogadro's number, you would just assume that it has no significant figures and you would ignore it. Okay. Um, so memorize it, please, to four, four, four digits. Okay. Now, this is a large number. This is one of the reasons why it's vital that you can use the scientific calculator uh, to enter numbers of that magnitude. So that number is well, 6022, and then lots of zeros. So you've got one, two, three, three. Might have to put the commas in different places. One, two, three, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty zeros and one, two, three. So yeah, so that's Avogadro's number. Comma, 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 comma. So let's see. That's a trillion. We've got three, six. That's billion again. And that's hundred. So it's of order hundred billion trillion. That's big. Okay. There's a couple of other definitions that we'll need. We'll need to know that by definition, a mole of anything, so anything could be x, a mole of x, is Avogadro's number of that thing. So a mole of x is exactly Avogadro's number of x. A half mole of x would be half an Avogadro's number of it. 
or two moles of X would be two lots of Avogadro's number. Um, So that's that. Um, I don't know if anyone showed up yet, so I don't know if anyone is trying to ask a question. Um, I wouldn't even know how to check. I guess if anyone's there, no comment. If anyone's there, I can check to see if you've sent a message on Canvas. So if anyone's there, send me a message or uh, a comment on Canvas, and I'll know that there's a question. Okay. Oh, I yeah. Okay, I'm trying to send a message to people now. Let's see. Again, this is my first time using this. Okay, anyway, I'm going to carry on. Okay. Um, there's one of the, well, a couple of other things that we'll need to know before we move on. So it's vital that you know a mole of X is Avogadro's number of X. Another thing that uh, I'll need you to know is that um, by definition, 12 grams of carbon-12 is exactly one mole of carbon-12. That's actually what the mole is based off of. Okay, so 12 grams of carbon-12, where 12 is the number found for carbon in the periodic table. So not 12.01, but exactly 12. That's exactly, by definition, one mole. Okay, so I'm going to erase this uh, in a second, and then we'll start looking at some examples of specific elements. So let's take a couple of elements. So we'll take, now I'm not going to write 12, I'm going to write 12.01, because that's how you see it in the periodic table. 12.01, 6, that's carbon. About to see that. Um, let's pick another element. 1.0118. And sixteen eight oxygen. No good place to put that light as though. Okay. Ideally I would have had people from the theater company help me with lighting, but this is definitely the first time I'm trying to do anything like this. Yeah, that's tough. I don't know if that's any better. Probably not. Okay. So 12.01 grams of carbon-12. So I know that if I take the mass, the atomic mass, which we give the letter A, the atomic mass A, if I take that in grams, that's exactly one mole of carbon. Oh, 
Awesome. If I take 1.01 grams of hydrogen, that's exactly equal to one mole of hydrogen. If I take 16 grams of oxygen, that's exactly equal to one mole of oxygen. So this is very important. We can have a one-to-one -one mole ratio, but that's not a one-to-one -one mass ratio. So we have to be very careful about using mass ratios. In fact, we have to be so careful, we don't do it. We never take mass ratios. We only ever take mole ratios. OK? Okay, so I've just noticed uh, Jose. Okay, cool. All right, I'll have to keep my jokes in minimum then. Okay, again, this is the first time I've ever done this, so it will get easier. I'll figure out the lighting thing. Um, if you have a question or if you have something specific you want to look at, um, I have the little chat window open. You can send me uh, a quick message or what have you. Okay. So we have, um, OK, so this is vital. This mole ratio, there's no such thing as a mass ratio. OK. Um, I'm going to erase this unless there's any questions. I'd like to look next at, um, we're going to add atoms together to make a molecule. And we'll see how you come, instead of atomic mass, as you, you pull them together to make uh, a molecular mass. OK. OK. So let's take a water molecule. The so water has two hydrogens and one oxygen, so it's H2O. So we look at the composition of that molecule. We have two water, two hydrogens, so each hydrogen has a mass of 1.01, and oxygen has a mass of 16. So there's no need to memorize these numbers. They're on your periodic table. Uh, the units, they're either AMU, which stands for atomic mass unit, So atomic mass unit, AMU. An atomic mass unit is also equal to a gram per mole. So either atomic mass unit or grams per mole. OK, so if I want to figure out the weight of water, I've got to add all the atomic masses up. So if I add these together, I get a total of 18.02 grams per mole. And that's the weight of a water molecule. So I know that 18.02 grams of water is exactly one mole of water. So we did it with atoms. Now we can combine atoms together and do it for molecules. Eighteen point zero two grams of water. Now, before I erase this board, one mole of water is equivalent to two moles of oxygen 
which is equivalent to one mole, sorry, two moles of hydrogen. That number two is two moles of hydrogen. One mole of oxygen. Okay. So these are qualities that we're going to use in dimensional analysis in a few minutes. So the numbers, if there is no number, like there's no number here, we assume it's a one. We just don't have to write it. So I know that one water is actually a ratio of two hydrogen and one oxygen. Well, a ratio of what? It's a ratio of moles. Or the mass contribution of water was two equivalent masses of hydrogen and one equivalent mass of oxygen. So these are the fundamental concepts that you'll need to get comfortable with before we start uh, plugging in any um, any numbers and doing uh, stoichiometry. So I've just seen, yep. Yeah. Just seeing that you corrected me very good. I am drinking coffee, but it's, it's only half calf. Okay. So unless there's questions with this, I'll erase this and we'll plug some numbers in and do a proper um, dimensional analysis type question. Okay, so just a, a simple one to start to make sure that there's no, you know, there's no point doing something complicated if there's any issues with a simple example. So let's say we take um, hydrogen and oxygen. And we're going to make a water molecule. The first thing we need to do is to First thing we need to do is to um, balance the equation. So we need to make sure there's an equal number of items on either side of the arrow. So right now I have two hydrogens. So the subscript two just means there's two of them. And I've got two oxygens. The arrow is in equals. And on the right of the arrow, I have two hydrogens. I only have one oxygen. Okay, so right now they're not equal. So to make them equal, they have to be equal. I'm going to obey the conservation of mass law by Antoine Lavoisier. I have to start adding coefficients. The only thing I can do is add coefficients. So what I'm going to have to do, I can't take any of the subscripts away, so I can't remove that 2. But I can put a coefficient 2 here, which will multiply that 2. So I have two oxygens on each side. This 2 is now multiplied to hydrogen, so I have four hydrogens. It's still not equal yet, but I can make it equal by putting a coefficient 2 here. So I've got 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 hydrogens. That's the first thing you always do. You make sure that you've um, you make sure that you balance your equation. Okay? So once we've balanced it, we can start plugging some numbers in. So let's say I have five moles of hydrogen. Let's say I've got five moles of hydrogen, and I'm going to calculate how many moles of water I can produce. Okay, so you'd set this up as a dimensional analysis. 
you always look at the unit of your answer. So I need moles of water. Now the unit of mole is just MOL. So the, the noun itself is mole, but the unit of the noun is mole. Okay. Shouldn't have touched that. <laughs> okay, so I need mole of water. So I'm going to immediately write mole of water here. Okay. Well, I know from the balanced equation, I have a two to two mole ratio. So this number two goes here. I know that two moles of water is equivalent to two moles of hydrogen. So I have mole, ignoring the number for now, I have mole of water equals mole of water. I don't have mole of hydrogen in my answer, so I need to cancel mole of hydrogen by putting it up here as a numerator. And canceling it with this one. Now I can insert my input. So the ratio was two. But the actual input was five. So five multiplied by two is 10, divided by two is five. So the answer is five moles of water. My input had one sig fig. The significance of your input and output should be the same. So my answer has one sig fig. Okay. This might look like a simple example. But if all of my students could do a simple example like this, my grades would be higher than they are. So don't underestimate how challenging a simple example like this can be to some people. And make sure it's not challenging to you. Okay. So we've got five moles of water. What about if I asked um, how many well, let's look at another example. So that, that's a nice, simple example. What if I said you have ten moles of water, and I asked you how many uh, grams oxygen you produced. Okay. So I need grams of O2 for so the molecule, not the atom. If you need gram, you write gram immediately. Now whenever you write gram, you always write the weight in grams. So I've got two oxygens. Oxygen has a weight, if you look at the periodic table, oxygen has a weight of 16.00 grams. I've got two of them, so the weight of molecular oxygen is 32 grams. So I've got the weight in grams of the, of the object of my question. And you know that the weight in grams of anything is equal to a mole of that thing. So 32 grams of oxygen equals a mole of oxygen. I need to cancel mole of oxygen. I put it up here. Cancel it. Now I can't use my input yet because I've got units of mole and my input has units of grams. So I need to convert mole to gram in the reverse way I did this. I know by definition that one mole of oxygen You probably noticed I've done something wrong. Okay. So realizing I've done something wrong, I can fix it, but it's probably not the way I wanted you to do it. Um, no, actually, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm sorry. Not by definition, based on the equation. I've got a coefficient 1 here. So 1 mole of oxygen is equivalent to 2 moles of water. 
We're back. Okay. So this is not a definition. It's just relevant to this question. There's a one to two mole ratio here. One to two. Now I can use my input of 10 moles of water. Okay. So we multiply 10 by 1 by 32. That's 320. So I'm doing it on my calculator. That's 320 divided by 2, which I should probably be able to do in my head. And I'm going to give this to one sig fig because my input only had one sig fig. The calculator says 160. So the answer is really 160. Um, let's actually keep it as two sig figs. Let's put a decimal here to make that zero meaningful. Because I really don't want to round that to 200. So we'll put a decimal here to make that two sig figs. And we'll leave the answer as two sig figs. So the answer is 160. So, so far we've seen a calculation of moles to moles. Here we've seen the link between mole and gram. We've gone forwards, we've gone backwards. Um, the next question I'd like to look at is um, uh, gram to gram. Okay. And again, I have the, I can see the Ch Ching Yan and um, how I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, but I see a couple more people have joined. Um, if, if you have a question, I have the chat box open. Uh, feel free to send me a chat, or if you have a specific question that you want me to solve or something that you want to ask, feel free. Otherwise, I just have an agenda, some basic mole things that I know cause people problems, and I'll just go through them. Um, and now that I know how to do this, we can all we can do more of this. So, you know, on Thursday, if you realize something's come up, let me know and we'll schedule another conference on a specific topic. Great. So what if we had So I give you 5.7 grams of hydrogen, and I ask you how many grams of water are produced. OK, so you start off with the thing that you want, which is water. So we have gram of water. Whenever I have gram, I immediately put gram here. And whenever I write gram, I write the weight in grams. From the first question we did, we know the weight in grams of water is 18.02. So it's one oxygen plus two hydrogen. And I set that equal to a mole of water. Notice when you write dimensional analysis, there's always three things that you write. You write a number, you write a unit, and you write a noun. Always a number, always a unit, always a noun. If you miss something out, then you, you're not communicating well. And anything that's above any numerator has, be, has to be equal to a denominator. So is 18.02 gram of water equal to a mole? Yes. If the numerator does not equal the denominator, it's wrong. Even if the answer gives the same answer, it's for the wrong reason, and it will be marked incorrectly. So we put mole of water up here and cancel. And then I use the mole ratio. 
I know that two moles of water are equivalent to two moles of hydrogen. Again, this is an equality. They have to be equal. Now, if you were to switch those two numbers, you wouldn't change the answer, but you'd still get it wrong because you're not showing how you did it properly. If you switch those numbers, two moles of water does not equal one mole of water, even though it won't affect the answer. So these things don't commute. Notice whatever is written as a denominator tells you what to write in the preceding um, in the preceding numerator. So moles of hydrogen, I still can't use my input yet, but I know by definition a mole of hydrogen is the weight of hydrogen. Now my chemical is H2, so that's two hydrogen atoms. So each hydrogen atom is 1.01 .01 gram. So an H2 is 2.02 .02 grams. Now I can use my input. So I'd multiply 5.7 by 1 by 2 by 18.02. And then I divide by 1 by 2.02 .02 by 2 by 1. I'm going to do that. 5.7 by 2. Okay, I'm going to round this to two sig figs because when I multiply or divide, I propagate least sig figs and I have two sig figs in my input. So this would round to 51 grams. So the calculator says 50.84851490, which is obviously garbage. So you'd have to round that to two sig figs. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm just going to carry on. Again, if you have a question, um, I have the chat box open. Um, So yeah, I don't how Shan has just said not yet. I don't I'm not sure what that means. Um, maybe that's he's saying that's somebody else, I don't know. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Jose Jose has a question. Yes. Yep. Swaction has no role. Ah. I don't know if you can hear me answering a question. Can you hear me or do I need to type? Can you hear? Oh. oh, okay, you can hear. All right, so it's quicker if I just say the answer. All right. It's not that oxygen doesn't have a role. I mean, obviously, if you if you don't have oxygen, you're not going to have water because you need oxygen, right? It just doesn't have a role in this question. So we're, we're actually assuming, so we're just assuming that there's a, as much oxygen as you need. 
So yeah, you're right. Oxygen obviously has a role. We're just, it's not our input, that's all. So if I take 5.7 grams of H2 and, as, and a, as much oxygen as I need, how much water will you make? So we're just assuming that there's a plentiful supply of oxygen. So I hope that answers the question. What if we have um, a number? So what if we had um, So what if we have uh, molecules? Now, this is very sticky. My students typically, or not just my students, students everywhere in every country and every generation always get confused with this. Mole and molecule. So I said that mole is a specific number of molecules. But a question can ask you to calculate moles or it can ask you to calculate molecules. So even though mole is a number of molecules, the unit's different. Moles has a unit of mole. Molecules has no unit. So you have to be very careful about what you're being asked. If I ask you for molecules, don't calculate mole. All right, so if I need molecules, here's what you do. We said that there's always three things that you write, a number, a noun, sorry, a number, a unit, and a noun. The number is going to be my answer. There is no unit, but there is a noun, so I just write water. Okay, I'll get my head out of the way. Whenever you calculate a number, you immediately write Avogadro's number. So again, whenever you're trying to calculate a number, immediately write Avogadro's number 100% of the time. And then you set that equal to one mole. Remember, the numerator must be equal to the denominator. Mole of water. I know that two moles of water is equal to two mole of hydrogen. And my input is two. So crucially, this number two comes from the balanced equation, that number two. So again, this denominated two came from that two. This numerated two came from that number. So they coincidentally were the same here. Again, that bottom number is that number two. That top number is that number two. All right. So here's where you see if you can enter and you calculate it correctly. So it's 2 by 2 by 6.022 e to the 23rd power divided by 2. Okay, we're going to round this just to one sig fig. So it's just 1 by 10 to the 24th power. Now, if you can't get that number, so the calculator should say 1.2044 by 10 to the 24th power. We've rounded it to one sig fig. If you don't get 10 to the 24, if you get something else, 
bring your calculator into lab on Thursday and I'll show you how to do it. Usually 50% of the class will have an issue entering scientific notation. Um, and I saw from the Nayori exam, there's still a couple, not 50%, but there's still a couple of people uh, are wrestling with the calculator. Okay, let me see if there's any more. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. So let's use it to. Okay. So there's still only three of us here, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully it records for everyone else. Okay. Mm. okay. All right. Uh, unless there's questions, we'll erase this and we'll look at something different. Okay. Um, Now, I haven't decided if we're going to look at limiting reagents in your class. I'm not sure yet. Let's look at it anyway, just in case I do. And I'm not 100% sure if we will. So if this looks, if you know, if you've taken any high school chemistry and this looks pretty straightforward to you, the good news is it won't get much harder than this. So Chem 65 is not designed to be hard. It's an introductory course. Uh, it's designed to prepare you for um, for general chem, for Chem 101. Now, whether or not everyone's going to Chem 101, it doesn't matter. That's the design of the course. What if you have two knowns? So what if you have five gram? Let's let's give an extra decimal. What if you have five gram of each? So whatever you have, so previously we just had one known and one unknown and a mole ratio that links them. If you have two unknowns, this becomes a limiting type reaction. You have to figure out which reactant will run out first and limit the whole reaction. So the trick is just to, well, the way, not the trick, the way to communicate this is to try both. So we're going to do one for hydrogen. I'm going to do another calculation for oxygen because we don't know which one to pick yet. Okay. So for hydrogen, I'm trying to calculate grams of water. I'm going to write gram of water here. Whenever I have gram, I immediately write gram. And I write the weight in grams, so it's 18.02. Again, 18.02 is the mass of one oxygen and two hydrogens all added together. And that's equal to one mole. We put mole of water up here and cancel. I know that there's two moles of water equivalent to two moles of hydrogen. Can't use my input yet. I know that a mole of hydrogen is 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen. And I've got five gram of hydrogen. Okay. So I'm going to do that calculation. So five multiplied by one multiplied by two multiplied by 18.02 divided by 2.02 .02, divided by two. 
Okay, and we'll round this, it doesn't matter. We'll round it to, well, it's two sig figs. So that's 40, actually, we don't want to round yet. So even though it should be rounded to two sig figs, let's keep an extra digit. So 44.6, I'll underline the second four to remind myself to eventually round this to two sig figs. I don't want to do it yet. Now I'm going to do the same calculation, but with the other known. So I'm going to use the other oxygen, uh, the other known, which was oxygen. Okay. So 18.02 grams water. That's one mole of water. I know there's two mole equal to one mole of oxygen. Two mole of water is the same as one mole of oxygen. Okay. I know that one mole of oxygen is the weight of oxygen in grams. So there's two oxygens. So that's 32 even grams of oxygen. My input is five grams of oxygen. This is the way I'd like you to lay it out on your Gibbs exam. Okay, so we've got five multiplied by one, multiplied by two, multiplied by 18.02, divided by 32, divided by one, etc. So this gives me five point. Six three. I'll underscore that six because it'll remind me to round it to two sig figs later. So I had an equal number of equal mass of reactants, but the hydrogen, if I use that number, it gives me forty four point six grams. The oxygen, if I use that, it only gives me five point six. Whichever is the smallest is known as the theoretical yield. A theoretical yield is the only yield that's ever produced. The theoretical yield came from the reactant that we know is the limiting reactant or limiting reagent, reagent or reactant. Limiting reactants always produce theoretical yields. Theoretical yields are always the smallest product. You don't know which is going to be the smallest. You have to try them both. And you must always show your workings for both. If we had three unknowns, you'd have to do three equations. If we had five, five knowns here, you'd have to do five equations. Luckily here, we only had two, so we only had to do two equations. OK, so we've got about five minutes left. Um, well, now that I can do this again, we will do it again. Maybe we'll see what topics people want on Thursday. But are there any questions with this? I don't, let's see. Okay, the question is Would you give all of us the formula weight of the element that would be used in the exam? Uh, yeah, you, everyone will have a periodic table. So you'll have a periodic table with the formula weight of every element. Um, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to, you know, for example, I wouldn't tell you that water is 18.02. If I give you a periodic table with oxygen and hydrogen, 
you can add one oxygen and two hydrogen and calculate 18.02 yourself. So you will have a periodic table. Um, so just in the last few minutes, um, I guess just to summarize the key equations that you have to know. This little introduction to moles, just some key fundamentals of moles. We've been either going from mass to mole or mole to mass. We've been going from mole to number or number to mole. But you cannot go from mass directly to number. So mole is the central unit because it links everything else. So if you look back at everything we've done and everything that you've read by the sounds of it, mole is the key, mole is the fundamental unit. We always calculate moles. To go from mass to mole, you divide by the weight or the formula weight. To go back again, the opposite direction, you would multiply by the formula weight. Different direction, different mathematical operation. To go from mole to number, you multiply by Avogadro. Opposite direction, you would divide by Avogadro. There is no going back and forth here. So these are the mathematical operations we've been doing. Um, now, if you can do that, you should have no problem with moles. Um, if you do, we can do another video if you have any specifics. Um, maybe we will do a video on limiting reagents and yields. That would be definitely an extra hour video, uh, at least. Um, but we'll take a survey. I think we'll take a survey on Thursday in lab when everyone's there. And maybe we'll, you know, vote on a video that's going to be most useful to the most people. Okay, so that's about uh, that's about an hour. Are there any questions? Any questions before I sign off? Okay, well, ho hopefully that was useful. Um, you know, for the three of you uh, showing up, I'll definitely make a note of, of who attended live. And again, you know, now if this is the first time I've done it, now I know how to do it and I know how easy it is. And I know how funny the lighting was, and I'll fix that. Um, let's, let's, you know, think about topics that are relevant to you moving forward for the Gibbs exam. And, Let's make sure there's nothing that comes up in your reading that's going to hold you back. If you tell me ahead of time a topic, um, I'll, I'll be back here with, with an overview of the topic, in addition to the ones that I think you'll need help with uh, for something specific. OK, so thanks for, thanks for attending, and I'll see you on, 
on Thursday. Okay, bye-bye.